continue with our breaking news this morning from the UCLA campus where more than 100 pro-Palestinian demonstrators were detained overnight as police cleared out their encampment that had been there for a week now. Some of the de detainees still waiting to be processed. KTLA's Alina Bovian is <laughs> at UCLA on campus there in that part of the uh, campus where those folks are being loaded onto buses. What is the latest? Good morning, Alina. Good morning, guys. Now, the latest is we have about a handful of people right here behind me who are still waiting to be loaded into these buses. Now, if you're just tuning in, I'm going to catch you up to what's been going on here. This is Dickens Court on the campus of UCLA, not very far from where they've been camping out, uh, protesting over the last few days. Now, if we zoom over to that young lady over there who is being processed you can see her hands are in zip ties and that's really the process they come to this area they get patted down their hands are placed in zip ties whatever possessions they have whatever's in their pocket if they have any personal items that gets placed into either a clear bag and then into paper bags those bags are placed in front of them and they wait then to be processed into these buses just two buses left here these buses will be going down to county that's where they will be booked. Now, we don't know the charges they will be facing at the very least of it, unlawful assembly. That's the reason behind all of this. We know from the CHP, last we heard, 130 people around there were detained. That number possibly has gone up to 200, considering more people were brought to this area since we last spoke to CHP. Now, this has been happening for several hours this morning, ever since last night, once uh, officers here realize that the situation really needs to stop that they have to start taking these people into custody because the encampment it was just getting way too out of hand now as far as what's happening here they're cleaning up this is the culmination of the last few days it's been a very intense situation here on the campus of ucla a lot of passion a lot of people wanting to get their point across pro-palestinian groups wanting their demands met by ucla essentially saying that they want the university to sever ties with companies that they work with with. They want the university to acknowledge that they want peace. They want to end the genocide that is happening on the Gaza Strip. And this is how it ended here on the campus of UCLA. Just a few people left. They're sitting on the sidewalk. And I think what's happening here, CHP, they're taking their time placing the detainees on the buses. They want to give them the chance to still be out on the sidewalk to calm down, to get some fresh air before they load them into these buses. Because once they're in these buses, it's a drive down to then be processed excuse me um into county jail now the last group right here you can see just a handful of them they were just told to stand up these officers here are getting their belongings just a few things that they have and they are now going to be walked escorted onto that bus again we just have two buses left here so very few people left on campus who still need to be detained and escorted off the ucla campus that's the very latest i'm lena bovian we'll send it back to you in the studio all right alina we're going to continue our coverage from ucla all morning long now to some other stories former dodger pitcher julio urias has pleaded no contest to misdemeanor domestic battery charges according to court records the 27 year old received 36 months of probation, 30 days of community labor, and he must attend a year-long domestic violence counseling course. A second count of domestic battery and other charges were dismissed as a result of the no contest plea. Prosecutors say Urias pushed his wife against a fence and pulled her by the hair or shoulders outside BMO Stadium last September. Urias is currently not pitching in Major League Baseball. The CDC no longer requiring hospitals to report COVID-19 hospitalization <coughs> data. Effective as of yesterday, the agency says hospitals no longer need to report COVID-related hospital admissions or details about the status of infected patients. The move comes as COVID hospitalizations reach an all-time low. Only 5,615 hospitalizations related to the virus were reported by the CDC for the week of April 20th. Uh, we're going to switch gears now and talk about the weather because a lot of people are wondering what's going to be like this weekend, what's going to happen. Yeah, weather's going to be a little bit on the overcast side, but look at this. This is from our uh, Lake Arrowhead shot at Santa's Village, uh, Sky Park, and uh, where are the cameras? Just a little bit above the clouds, but there you can even see the cloud bank bumping up against the uh, mountains. So it's going to be an overcast start for today, tomorrow, heading into Saturday and Sunday. We're going to have not just the uh, marine layer, but on Sunday, we're also going to be dealing with a low, which is going to be coming inside slider and possibly bring us some rain, if not rain, definitely colder temperatures. 
74 down to 72 down to 68 but